This is the best from the West. You can catch all WA racing action live and free on 7 Plus, of course, and tune in to Racing WA TV on 7 Plus. Miles Fitz now filling in for Gareth Hall. I'm joined in studio by Pete Anthonis to preview the Gold Rush. Hello, Pete. G'day. Hey, mate. Uh, Pikey on an e-scooter. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, I, I, you know what? Um, apparently there is some footage that he's um, he went – to the back of a group of people with an e-scooter and he tried to weave his way through and maybe <laughs> just clipped. Bumped the rail? <laughs> and, he's, yeah. and he's just clipped a curb on his way through as he was just weaving the wand. Now, I, I, you can't help but chuckle. He has broken his wrist, but I'm sure he, I'm sure he would see some humour in it as well. Look, I hope so. I mean, he's already a little bit uh, sore still after the ankle injury, however long ago that was, but in the, say, like the last 12 months or so. Um, does this mean we change the name of the show on Saturday? Yeah, well, it's not. It's, it should be Pikey Time, sponsored by an e-scooter company. <laughs> oh, really? Goodness me. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's throwing the gold rush into a bit of chaos, hasn't it? I mean, he was named on Western Empire. There's still no Clint Johnston Porter named on Ripcord, so I suspect he's first in line to pick up that ride. But if Clint sides with Ripcord, then all of a sudden it's throwing it wide open, Eastern States jocks, SOS. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. So we expect Holly, um, as mentioned before, with Comfort Me, and then Zip Away, Ripcord and Western Empire are the three without jockeys, and uh, CJP is the only one not locked in. Yes, uh, there's Lacto Romilly as well. I assume he would be going for Zip Away. I don't think anyone necessarily anticipated Zip Away to be backing up off the northerly drop back in distance with a potential Ted Van Heemps coming up over 2100. Um, or the ATA for that matter. So, yeah, the whole field is just still finding its feet here uh, Tuesday morning. Certainly is. Over the 1,400 for, uh, yeah, 1. 1.5 million, 800 to the winner. You'd think a uh, an Eastern Stater um, would put his hand up uh, for one of those. I mean, we're talking about three of the horses that can sort of run in. Too. Yeah. And, let, I mean, like, if we put this simply, um, the second up performance of Western Empire, 1,300 at Northern Last Preparation, that figure wins this race if he can match that because the rest of the field hasn't quite got to that level yet. So, I mean, if he draws anywhere neutral, we're talking, you know, barrier five to 10, he's going to be in the race up to his eyeballs. Yeah. Would you think it's CJP would just be straight up? Bang I, West? Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. I think he's the logical one. He's a very similar rider to Pikey. The market might react to some extent and I'm still expecting the market probably comes to super smink off the luckless run in the Northerly. But you're looking at all these horses. I mean, horses like rope them in, great runs the last two starts, but this is all of a sudden an afterthought. He's gone to the winter bottom to peak run there. He has to back up and go up in distance. Let's Well, let's run through them. Why, why don't we, if we can? Um, I know we've got the barrier draw still to come out, but Western Empire uh, comes out of the uh, sort of the luckless run in the winter bottom to, before that second in the Colonel Reeves goes third up here, um, as you mentioned, riding this race up to its neck. Yep, exactly right. And look, the the last start run in the winter bottom, I know he was only out with 100 to go. Pikey really didn't test him going to the line. And that was after running the race slowest 600 to 400. And that's when he's meant to be building momentum. So a complete forgive. Uh, Valor Road for Simon Miller uh, comes out of the Carbine Club. Had a little sort of trickle up there at Lark Hill as well. Before that was um, not all that great in the least here, really. Uh, close enough in the Eurythmic and... Um, Going right back was second in the idyllic prince, but uh, I mean, would probably have to get its own way up front, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's got a relatively straightforward racing pattern these days. Just basically go forward. Luke Curry's been booked, which is an interesting jockey booking, so they've gone with one of the Eastern States jock there. But I mean, look, for the most part, he can draw any barrier and be competitive if he gets the right race shape up front. Let's go to Comfort Me. Just had a chat to Reese Radford before. You could argue bad luck in the railway. Um, not so great in the least, dear, but really good in the Eurythmic and beat some of these horses in Super Smink, Magnificent Andy, um, and, and did it again in the railway. I mean, this horse just continues to put in good runs. Eight from 43, 1.6 million, it's one. Just keeps going, doesn't he? I mean, he just keeps finding ways of just being competitive on the day. Look, um, we'll have to wait and see what the track conditions are. The rail is listed as rail true early days. So that all of a sudden puts a little bit of a question mark on any runner drawn inside. But we'll wait for confirmation on that rail. Bustler, uh, fourth in the northerly, uh, 13th in the railway and, and second in the least steer. At his best, 
maybe give him a shake? Yeah, I think so. Again, his draw is probably crucial more than a lot of these. He would need to draw favorably to put himself into the race. Although there was a bit of talk from Nev Parnham last week that they perhaps wanted to ride him a bit colder in the northerly, but that didn't eventuate. He was up there on speed. Steve Wolf has got Red Can Man, uh, one of his two runners. Um, I'd argue he'd like he'd have to go almost career best the eight year old. Yeah, and he doesn't look like he's quite at that level anymore. A uh, hot Z for Luciani's. Um, look, the third in the winter bottom probably reads pretty well. Before that, uh, in the Colonel Reeves, um, I, I, I'd sort of you'd think a bridge too far. But gee, the winter bottom run was a highlight. He's a bit like Comfort Me in a way. He just finds races where he's able to just keep going at a real consistent level. Again, he would probably need a lot to go right to win. But I mean, he's always like a fluker's chance with a barrier. Is Ripcord going well enough at the moment? Um, look, if, coming off the. Um, the Melbourne runs and, and maybe not having a great time of it, but does go back. And I mean, we know this horse got serious ability. Yeah. At his best. And um, this is a big question mark, but I mean, he's probably going to be a big enough price that you could just chop on him. Make sure you're not losing any money on the race. Uh, let's get to Magnificent Andy from Stephen Miller. Had a chat to him and he's put some good races in too. Yeah. And he's probably better suited than a lot of these at wait for age. Again, another horse that needs a barrier, put himself into the race and he'll be competitive. Uh, triple Missile, we see him again. He was a, a fair way off them, should I say, in the railway. Uh, not far off in the Asian bow. Uh, does go third up. Um, and uh, whether or not, uh, I, I think it is best, he might still be a bit too tough. Yeah, and I guess the problem for Triple Missile, doesn't have great gate speed. He's probably going to be back there with a few other horses with very similar turns of foot. So, yeah, we'll need his absolute best. A zip away who I was a bit more keener on at a price in the railway. I, I couldn't have him in the northerly, and it, maybe that showed. But um, I don't know whether or not he, he's got it in him either. There's only three from 14, but it wouldn't shock me. No, it's a bit of a funky setup, though, isn't it? 1,800 back to 14 with a yeah. potential of going up in distance again. So I'm not exactly sure where the prep's at for him. Uh, Mojo Rhythm comes out of the northerly, the railway, and uh, back to the RJ Peters, which at one beating on Glass and Amber Glide. Uh, what do we got? Uh, was it close enough to two links off them in the railway and then sort of two and a half links off them in the northerly? Um, I'm not sure whether or not it can. Yeah, 14's probably a little bit of a question mark. You'd think there would be a few sharper here, but... Look, he is a horse that just often bobs up when there's a slow tempo or something like that. They muddle up front. So I couldn't completely pen him, but he's another that I'm surprised isn't having a crack up in distance. Wrote them in uh, who beat Western Empire a couple back in the Colonel Reeves uh, and not far off overpass and Mahaba in the group one. This horse has popped up. It showed glimpses before that he might be something a little bit special and he could be something a little bit special. Yeah, he's gone to a new level with those blinkers on. It was a peak in the Colonel Reeves. He just came off that a little bit in the winter bottom, but with excuses. Can he go one more and then up in distance? I've got a slight query, but again, I won't be losing on him. Uh, we go to Aztec Ruler, uh, trained by the Valhallas. And, um, well, it was a good win in the Carbine Club, beating Valor Road and Devoted um, in behind Mojo Rhythm and Yonga Lass and a few others. Is this another one that sort of needs it its own way? Maybe yeah. rolling out in front? Yeah, I think probably needs to draw well. And again, I'm just a little bit iffy on that Carbine Club. Super Smink. Where, where have you got this horse at now? Like... Uh, what's he nearly four lengths off him in the northerly? Um, he was three quarters of a length off him in the railway and won the Asian bow uh, before that. This is a really interesting runner here, 57 kilos in this field. Yeah, trained for the 1800. That was their grand final for her, the whole preparation. Now back to 14 after the luckless run. It's just, you know, can you go one more? Can you go one more and get the right race shape and get the right barrier draw and everything like that? It's just. We'll wait and see to see what the, the draw comes out as, but needs to draw perfectly. Search and Rocks is six-year-old mare. Where are we? Like, it's one over a million dollars, Search and Rocks. Nine from 30. It, um, won the Idyllic Prince go uh, way back to August. Fifth in the Black Heart Bart. Uh, fifth in the Arrhythmic. Fifth in the Lee Steer. Seventh in the Railway. There or thereabouts midfield. Not going well enough for mine. She can put herself into the race, and she does have a pretty competitive starting price profile against half the field, but not necessarily the top end. Wind in the line in behind Cashel Palace and London's image. Um, had beaten a couple of those horses in the race before in the Placid Arc, and before that uh, was fourth in the Prelude. Um, progressive horse, next prep lookout. I don't know whether or not this might be too tough for it. Yeah, I don't think the three-year-old form's necessarily stacking up as well as we might have hoped. Uh, saloon Bar, Laced Up Hills, Devoted Rock and Rupert. 
to be honest, you could probably put those four in at the expense of four or five others and make a silly case for them to, you know, run top four. But a um, bit unlucky, I think, for a few of those. The field sort of panned out a little bit unexpectedly. Let's run through the market then, thanks to Bet365. So Western Empire at four fifty, Super Smink at five fifty, rope them in seven fifty. Comfort Me nine dollars, Magnificent Andy eleven dollars, Bustler seventeen with Saloon Bar. Uh, Aztec Ruler and Ripcord, Search and Rocks, Wind and the Lion, all nineteen dollars. Triple Missile is twenty ones. Rock and Rupert, Valor Road, Zip Away, all at twenty sixes. Devoted Hot Z, Laced Up Heels, Mojo Rhythm at thirty fours. A Red Can Man is a hundred to one. Um, the market, I think, has pretty well got them right. I probably would have had maybe roped them in a fraction shorter. Yeah. Um, uh, I think he looks to me like the one on paper that might be overs. And I thought Ripcord was the one at $19 that may have been overs. I tend to agree with both of those runners. And if Western Empire draws any gate outside of one, two, three, or four, I expect him to shorten from that. I think that's a pretty generous price for a horse that just clearly has a bigger ceiling than all these locals. I mean, it's only against locals here. Yeah. So the $4.50 for Western Empire, the $7.50 for Rope Them In, and the $19 for Ripcord would be the, the nibbles to probably take the overs. I think so. And look, probably on the day, if Bustler got out to a silly price, he would be the horse, if he's got a draw, that I'd probably chop on for the race. So where do you want to see Western Empire draw then? What What's ideal for you? Anywhere from 5 to 10 would be yeah. absolutely perfect. Yeah. Even if he draws wider than that, that's not the end of the world. I mean, if the rail is in true, you probably want to be off the fence and even in the three wide line anyway. But it's just really getting him bundled up on the rails. We saw in the Colonel Reeves, that's not going to be ideal for him. It's been a big comeback for this horse. Yeah, it has. Oh, I mean, do they know the purchase price of what they bought him back for? I think in, it was in the order of about 200 but I could be mistaken there. Have they got that back already? They'd be, well, maybe not. What's he won? One or two? Uh, I think he's won the, what, the Northern Let's Sprint have a look. There, back last preparation. Did he also place Let's it go in back twice here. more? Grant Alana to Danny, Danny to Leek, Leek to, back to Grant Alana. He won the Northern Stakes. Then he won the Belmont Sprint. Uh, he was second in the Strickland, fourth in the Hyperion, came back second in the Colonel Reeves and ninth in the Winterbottom. Um, what are those races? Well, the Northern Stakes, he would have pocketed 70, oh, 100, close enough to 100, and the Belmont Sprint, close enough to 100. So, yeah, they probably just got it back. Yeah, and they've got this live chance in a, what, $1.5 million race to come. So, I mean, what a look, purchase. Yeah, I mean, he only had upside, didn't he? I mean, there was clear excuses. He wasn't going at his best in Victoria for long stretches. I think we all know that. But at one point in time, I mean, he was one of the best horses in the country. And Well, I, I thought he could win a Cox Plate yeah. after what I'd seen. And and some of the data backed up that he could. Yep. Like, um, I, I I think the only time I've ever declared a dollar sixty pop and said it was worth a bet was him, uh, on air. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, this is overs. Yeah. Like, and and it was. He is. Well, he used to be machine like, and then all of a sudden he's got a few little just chinks in his armor since then, since he's come back. So that's why it's been the short preparations really targeting him at a couple of races in particular. This is one of them. Turn of foot used to be just devastating, wasn't it? Yep. It was like push button, find three more gears. And look, I think that's what we didn't see last start. I think a lot of people just expect that he can just pick up and go off 200, but really his strength is the last 800. Just getting rolling. He's a big horse, a strong character. If he gets clear egg, just coming around the turn, that's it. So where to for some of these after this? What, are, what are, Where are they going to be aiming some of these horses? Or is it sort of paddock time for a few of these? Yeah, I think there might be one or two that might try and just freshen up for a week or two, come back for the summer scorcher over a 1,000. Um, but look, for, for the most part, it might very well be paddock, with the exception of Zip Away. I wouldn't be surprised if he just lobs up in a race next week. You've got the ATA and you've also got the Ted Van Heemst over the 2,000 plus. He might very well just be using this as a barrier trial. So we're still at the ATA, the Ted Van Heaps, the Perth Cup. We're still at a fair few to come in the next sort of three or four weeks. Exactly right. And look, some of these horses may well chance their arm and say like a Mandra Cup at Pinjarra there just before New Year. Yep. I, uh, mate, appreciate your time as always. Have you got an on topper here at this stage or do you want to wait and see the barrier draw or we just take a few overs at this point? Look, I'm pretty bullish Western Empire. Yep is the right favourite. I'm expecting him to start shorter than what you can currently get, but at this point, you may as well just wait for the barrier draw. Yeah, well, we may actually see the price now because people will just pile in because of the pike factor. Yeah, exactly Two in the right. feature, so it uh, might actually help a few Western Empire players. Absolutely. Pete, appreciate your time this morning, mate. Anytime, Miles. This is the best from the West. Uh, make sure you go chuck Pete Anthony to follow. Dead Set Weapon, he is. Uh, you can tune in to Racing WA TV 
on 7 Plus. It's your ultimate destination for everything racing in the West.